Good morning, it is April 1st and we're so thankful that you're here to worship with us. Um, today we will be hearing from the DR team and getting a report on their missions trip that they took. We are so thankful that they are back and um, I'm, I know they have wonderful things to share with you. So would you bow your heads and pray with me before we get started? God, thank you for today and thank you for all of the many blessings that you give us. We're so grateful for you and we're grateful that even though we can't be together, that electronically we can still worship together. God, we're grateful for the DR team who went on a missions trip and came back and they have just so many wonderful things to share with us. God, we love you and we praise you and we ask that you help bless our time together. Amen. All right, and we are going to get started with I Will Follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow.
Good morning, guys. How are you today? I have a guest with us, actually right beside me. Mr. Hammond is here to join us. One thing we love doing every year is after the students get back from their mission trip to the Dominican Republic, having a chapel where we share about their experience with you. Um, you're such an important part of it as you help pray for them, as you help bring in supplies that they can bring on their trip, and so we love sharing. So Mr. Hammond is here and is going to talk with us some, as well as he has some videos from some of the students that went as well that we'll be sharing with you. So as we get started, Mr. Hammond, how many times have you gone to the Dominican Republic? Well, Mrs. Cox, everybody asks me that, and I don't know exactly how many, <laughs> but I can tell you that the first year I went was in 1998, and I know because that's the pictures that I have. So that was 22 years ago. I know there was a few years that uh, they went, like the baseball team went, mm -hmm. or um, one of the years I think maybe uh, I just couldn't go, and so... I would probably say it's more than 15 times. Which is so amazing. What is it that you love? If you keep going back, you have to love it. So what is it that you love about the Dominican Republic? I do. I absolutely love the Dominican Republic. And I mean, even though, um, as you'll be able to see from the pictures, and if you've seen pictures before from our trips, you'll know that the country is just beautiful. We can see God's creation and, and the beauty there. The ocean is really blue. It's mm -hmm. really neat. But what keeps me going back are the people. I absolutely love the people in the Dominican. Um, I've been working for 22 years now with the missionaries down there. They are Doug and Paula Hodges, and uh, they're just the best people. Mrs. Hodges, we call her precious. And <laughs> the, the boys and girls that go with me, the students that I take, they fall in love with her. And, and Mr. Hodges has just been a great uh mentor to me and, and really good good for me as well and then of course their daughter Allie and her mm -hmm. husband Gary he's Pastor Gary now at the church um, and there's so many other people I just love the people down there and then of course every year we go back and we visit with um, people that we've met um, Anna Maria is a widow that we've been working with for 22 years and her three boys that are now not boys they're almost 30 and uh, but we visit them every year so really absolutely love the people to see what God's doing down there every year to see those people that's why I keep going back which is so cool and uh, talk to us a little bit about what ministries the team was involved with this year as you were down there serving well for, for a long time we did lots of different things we even went up to the mountains of Constanza but with our trip happening for just a week during school it's really hard because Constanza is about four hours away mm -hmm. and so for the past three years we've really focused on some of the same ministries and the first one being at Las Palmas Christian Academy mm -hmm. it's the school down there which we call Greenbrier South by the way right. lots of good connections that's right we helped start that I remember and I was there in 2006 when uh, Mr. and Mrs. White came with us, Mrs. White used to lead the trip, and the one time that Mr. White came, we uh, we went down there and we had a little kickoff, and we invited the whole neighborhood and everybody and said, hey, there's going to be a Christian school, and so I remember that, and uh, we actually had our Greenbrier Christian Academy display mm -hmm. up for that, and that was really neat. So that's one of the ministries. We work in there, and you'll hear some of the kids that in their testimonies talk about that, but we actually teach lessons for three days mm -hmm. in at Las Palmas mm -hmm. at the school and we get to meet those kids. We, we got to paint at two different churches, the main church in San Pedro and then a, a sister church that they helped start um, out in uh, Ramon Santana. And the pastor out there, his name's Pastor Mota, and uh, he's one of the kids' favorites because he drives us everywhere. Um, I told you before, we have a ministry with the widow, Anna Maria, and her family, her three boys. We always uh, meet them at Domino's Pizza in their <laughs> city, which is just about 45 minutes away from San Pedro. And we, we have dinner with them, we, we share with them, then we go to the mall and walk around. Mm -hmm. We just enjoy um, a time with them. Um, this year, and I'll talk about it more in just a little bit, we got to do two new things. On Monday, we went to a public school to do a chapel for wow. them, and then we went into a small little village, which um, I hope some of the pictures you'll be able to see. Uh, this was like off the street and back in the back, and we just got to do a little Bible club with them, and that mm -hmm. was a lot of fun too. Well, I love hearing that you all do some things every year are, are part of that and you get to build those relationships, but it's also really neat to hear about new opportunities you have that you continue to, to um, develop. What, for this year, what stood out to you as maybe one of the most or, or a few of the most significant ministry opportunities that the team had on this year's trip? Well, I think um, one of the things leading up to the trip, 
because the last two years we've done the same thing. We've gone on Monday to um, a Bate, which is a very poor area uh, village, and we've gone into their school, and, and that, that, that little city is called uh, Esperanza, which means hope, and I love that word, and because there is a lot of hope, and we like to bring the hope of Jesus into that place. But this year we couldn't go into that. That ministry wasn't happening anymore through the church. So we got to do something new on Monday, and it actually is a brand new ministry that we got to kick off, and that was what I mentioned before in that public school, mm -hmm. um, where we got to lead a chapel. Um, our kids did um, the box skit. Some of you may remember that from a few years ago, where they bring out a box with a bad attitude, and they show themselves, and then at the end, uh, a Christian comes out, and, and they turn their box around, where hate becomes love, and, and they become a new person, and it ends with the boxes in a cross, show, and we all worship Jesus there at the end. So we got to do that in front of mm -hmm. about 200 public school kids. So. And, uh, and then Pastor Doug, the missionary that I talked about, he got to give the message in Spanish, and it was great. Mm -hmm. And we even watched... There was um, their, their, their gym, it's an outdoor basketball court where their um, bleachers were, and they were all lined up in there, but there were some baseball teams that were practicing in the field right next to it, and one of the oh. baseball teams stopped their practice and came over to the corner and listened to the chapel. So we're so just cool. thinking, wow, that wouldn't happen here in the States, where we got invited in yeah. to this public school, which is really just around the corner from Las Palmas, and we got to do that. It was a lot of fun. Well, and that even people that you weren't even, you knew you were going to the school, but that even this team that I don't think was connected right. to the nope. school, um, the fact that they, not only did they hear it, but they stopped so they could come right. and hear it and see. And, and guys, if you remember the box skit, one thing I love about it is it really shows how Jesus makes the difference and Jesus changes things and Jesus is good. Um, and what a cool opportunity you all had to share that with some new, uh, yes. new people this year and people who maybe otherwise wouldn't have heard it because they, they didn't, they weren't part of Las Palmas. Um, now, how many people were on the, the team from GCA this year? We had 12 students come with us, and uh, that was smaller than last year, but not the smallest mm -hmm. we've taken. The thing that was new about it was there were nine of them that were sophomores. So we were oh. a really young group this year, three seniors and nine sophomores. And um, out of the 12 students, 11 of them had never been before. Oh, so wow. this was a really fun trip. Oh with a bunch of kids that are really excited about getting to go again. The seniors, of course, will miss them. Maybe someday they can come back as chaperones, but uh, the uh, sophomores, I'm looking forward to having them back. Yeah, I know um, whenever I've had the opportunity to serve the Lord, whether it be through international missions or just serving the Lord here um, locally, I'm always, it's always neat to see you think you're going in to sort of serve others and, and be a blessing to others. And you are, and, and God wants to use you, and you can. But it's always amazing to see how God shows up in our lives in such big and significant ways and the things that we can learn from our experience and the things that we can be blessed by from our experience. So what did you see as some of the just special things that happen in in the team members, especially with so many of them being new? I, I didn't know that, but... Um, that's awesome. So what did you see? How did you see God working in the team? Well, it's really neat, and you're exactly right. We go um, with the goal, especially the people that have never been before, because they don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. they, we go with the goal of serving. Mm -hmm. And when we get there, we realize God had a lot of work to mm -hmm. do in our hearts and in mm -hmm. our lives. And so uh, one of my favorite times is when we get back together every night in the evening and we have devotions. And um, those devotions sometimes mm -hmm. go for two hours. Wow. And uh, we have a really, really good time. Um, one of our, our, our lady, young ladies, uh, Rebecca, brought her guitar and mm -hmm. um, led us in worship every night. And then um, myself and then Miss Christy Mahoney, mm -hmm. um, her son came in, mm -hmm. came back from Word of Life, and then uh, Donya Hines also. Um, so we took turns each night mm -hmm. giving a devotion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Mrs. Cox, what the neat thing is that I always see God doing this is every one of us, those messages came together. Mm -hmm. And um, I tell the kids, you know what, if we'll talk about the Bible more, if we talk about God more, we're going to find out that God is relating to you in a lot of the ways he's relating to me. Absolutely. And it's going to work together. And I get chills just thinking about it because that's how great God is. Mm -hmm. But it happens over and over again. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Donya Hines and I had a special time because 
she shared, she shared on, on Friday night devotions, and I shared on Saturday, and I talked about being an authentic Christian, and she talked about what kind of friends we should have, and then some of the things that I talked about with being an authentic Christian came from James chapter 3, and, and the tongue, being careful what you say. Well, wouldn't you know, in church on Sunday morning, Pastor Gary talked mm -hmm. about James chapter 3 and guarding the tongue and how important it is for us to do that, for uh, people to mm -hmm. see Jesus in us. And so that's the kind of thing that happened, and so... I just want to encourage all of us, my team first and each one of you, we'll just keep talking about the Bible and what God's doing in our lives because we're going to find out we're not alone. And guys, I love this too because you know what? We don't have to be perfect. It's not, you don't have to be perfect going on a mission trip because none of us are. <laughs> but you have to love the Lord and be willing to go and be willing to serve Him. And, and when you do, you're going to grow so much from it. And it is always so neat to see God show up in ways that you're not planning and you're not expecting. And how cool that I'm sure you all hadn't talked with Pastor Gary about what the sermon was going to be about. And then here it's something that God is doing and, and teaching you all as a team as well. So um, God just does some beautiful things. So, all right, you guys. So now Mr. Hammond is going to share some videos with us. Um, from team members and maybe even some pictures from the trip. So we'll enjoy uh, those. I hope you guys get to uh, enjoy seeing that and see what it's like in the DR a little bit, hearing from them. Some of these um, collegiate students you've met as they've come into your classrooms or have seen them in the halls. Um, and it's really cool, an opportunity to hear from them. So I hope you enjoy uh, what they have to share with us. Hi, my name's Kendall. First, I wanna say thank you to all the classes for your support bringing in supplies and the prayers. Uh, I'm very grateful, and I know everyone else on the team also appreciated it. First, I want to say that this is my first time going on the Dominican Republic trip. I'm a sophomore this year, and I loved every single moment. It was incredible, and it was incredible to see how God was working in all of our lives and in the lives of the Dominicans. Um, God really showed me on this trip how he can work in the most unexpected ways. The last night that we were there, I talked to one of the missionaries down there, and she was telling me her story, um, a little bit about her background, and she was telling me how she never thought of being a missionary. She never wanted to be a missionary, and God called her out to it when she was in college. And so she went to the Dominican. Um, she actually met her husband there, and now her and her family lives there. And it was just really encouraging to me. And on that trip, God showed me how unexpected he can be. He answered one of my prayers that I've been praying for a while, that I've been asking, and I would have never thought that he would answered it down in the Dominican um, and now back at home I still see how he's working unexpectedly but he will always love for us and care for us and I really was encouraged by her story and this whole experience I will never forget um, it was incredible and I definitely want to go back uh, thank you hopefully I'll see y'all at soon school bye so my testimony from the Dominican Republic missions trip, um, the first thing is the people in the Dominican are kind and welcoming and they're some of the kindest people you will ever meet in your entire life. So one night we uh, walked around the streets in the neighborhoods and we just like would say hi to the um, kids and the families and they would just randomly invite us in for dinner. And so just to see how welcoming they are and they'll just let random people into their houses. It is really cool to see and um, the neighborhoods, they aren't just, um, they're very unified. Um, so it's the Dominican against the world. They're all unified. They're all together as one, united. And I kind of wish the United States could be like that sometimes. And then the second thing is that I learned from our devotions was um, you're never alone in the darkness. And the reason I kind of learned that is because there are a lot of people who are going through a lot of really bad struggles. And so to know, I mean, we know Jesus is always by our side and everything like that. But it also feels good as believers to have somebody by your side, another believer, that is experiencing something that is the same level of hardness that you're going through. So that's the second thing. And then the final thing is don't write people off the first time you see them. 
So don't judge a book by its cover. Um, there were some people on this trip that I never thought I'd be friends with, and now I'm best friends with them. Um, that's the Dominican Republic missions team, not the people in the Dominican. But um, don't write someone off as a bad person or somebody you'll never be friends with after you see them for the first time or talk to them for the first time. Get to know them before you do that. And um, we just need to know as um, believers that we're always going to be facing struggles and there are other people who are facing them with us and will always support us. So that's the stuff I've learned on the Dominican Republic missions team. Hey guys, my name is Claire and today I'm here to talk to you just a little bit about my personal experience on the missions trip to the Dominican Republic this year. Um, to be honest with you, I was definitely a little bit nervous about going on the trip the closer we got to leaving, but I was also so excited to get to share the love of God with the kids in the Dominican Republic. Um, honestly, the first day we went to the school to teach at Las Palmas, I was definitely nervous. I was praying that the Lord would be able to use me to be a light to the kids and also that they would be able to see His love through me. As soon as we got to the school, the Lord truly calmed my nerves though and I was no longer worried or anxious to teach the kids. Um, even after just spending one day with the children at Las Palmas, I fell in love with them. They were all so sweet and all of the people we met were constantly smiling and helping others. Everyone was incredibly nice and welcoming. It was so neat to see how excited the kids would get after we gave them something as simple as a bracelet or a new toy. One of the, my favorite experiences from the trip was when we got to a, go to a more run-down community and we had the privilege of leading a Bible study for the kids. We got to sing songs, read books, and we even got to give the kids a wordless book bracelet. One of the little girls that I had the privilege of meeting while we were there was so sweet and she jumped into my arms and just continued to give me kisses on the cheek. Um, it was definitely altogether an amazing experience. After visiting the Dominican Republic, I also learned many important life lessons. It was so impactful on my life to see how amazing the people could act even when they are going through such hard circumstances. Even though the people lacked much materialistically, they never ceased to have a smile on their faces and love in their hearts for others. The trip was such an amazing, life-changing opportunity for me, and I'm so excited about going back next year, Lord willing. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Abby Engler. Like most of the other people on this trip, this was my first time going to the Dominican Republic, and I learned so much. One of the main things I learned is that we need to be grateful for all that we have. At the school that we taught at, there were times when we didn't have a class, so we would get to go out and play with the kids at recess. Their playground was not what our playground at GCA looks like. These kids did not have very much. Their playground consisted of a wooden swing set, a small area that was filled with sand where they could play, and a concrete sidewalk. Despite this, they found lots of different games to play, like kickball in that little area. Um, they played on the swings and on the sidewalk. They played a game called Foursquare, which they loved. Um, even though they didn't have very much, they found joy in these smallest things. Even after just a short time, these kids loved on us and formed a bond with us so easily. The Lord really opened my eyes in Dominican Republic. I want to thank Miss Soniker's class, Miss Miller's class, and Miss Sims class for all the things they brought for the kids. Everyone was a blessing with their prayers and support. Thank you. Hey, what's up? Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Caleb Weisinger, and I went to the Dominican Republic this year. Uh, quick shout out to the sixth graders, all of them, and Mrs. Legg's fifth grade class. Thank you all for your support and your prayers and bringing supplies. And it's, uh, it's unfortunate that I don't get to see you guys anymore this year, but... Sixth graders, I look forward to seeing you guys in the collegiate halls next year. And uh, fifth graders, hopefully I'll get to have you guys again. Anyway, uh, my trip was very eye-opening to me. And um, not in a, wow, this country is different kind of way, more in a, wow, I need more Jesus kind of way. Because one of the uh, most important things to me about the trip 
was nightly devotions. And that really, I did devotions every morning. I read chapters of the Bible. And then at night, we all got together and went over that and sang, which was one of my favorite parts, if not my favorite part of the entire trip. And it really just taught me the importance of devotions every day. It has such a big impact on the way you feel and you would have no idea until you started doing it. So that was the biggest thing for me on this trip. But other than that, it was just absolutely amazing. The country is amazing. The people there are amazing. Food's pretty good too. Um, but I am very, very glad that I went. If you are thinking about going, you need to go. It is amazing. And if you're thinking this isn't really for me, I was thinking that for years when my family, when my family members asked me if I was going to go, they always, I always said I would not, but then I did. And it was absolutely amazing. So anyway, just another thanks to my classes. And uh, I will see you all next year. Hi, I'm Lydia, and I just wanted to give a quick special thanks to Mrs. Ragsdale, Mrs. Sims, and Mrs. Legrand's classes for being so supportive, bringing in supplies, listening, and just praying over our whole group. Y'all are amazing, and I love you. So before going on this missions trip, I prayed that God would just move in our lives, that he would mold and prepare our hearts for what was to come in the Dominican. So when we were traveling, I was a little apprehensive about the whole trip, but all of those nerves went away when we had dinner that night and we got to meet Miss Paula, as well as the first day at Las Palmas. So I was part of the rocks and minerals group, yay, and um... It was just pure joy when we were able to have one-on-one -on -one time with the children and just show them the rocks and minerals and just see their faces light up over the smallest thing like a rock. So throughout the rest of our time, we were able to emerge ourselves into the culture and I was able to make new friendships with um, people my own age and I was able to continue to just love on and play with the younger children. So fast forward to our last day and probably my favorite day when we went into a really rundown area of the community and we had a Bible club. So we were walking down the alley and then um, kids would come out of their homes and join us and they were so happy and excited to sing and play games. So as we were singing and playing games, I got down and I motioned to a girl just as in saying hey, and she ran up and she just jumped on me, giving me the strongest hug and just, she was so, so sweet and she just held on tight and it really warmed my heart. So another favorite memory was also doing the Bible club and we, um, I was sitting next to a girl and she went back into her house and she got a book and it had Jesus on it and she pointed to him and she said Jesus and I was like yes and she kept on flipping through the pages and she kept on pointing to God and that just made me really really happy so um, that just made my day. I was really heartbroken seeing all of these people living in such conditions, but I'm just so thankful that we were able to serve them and um, show them the hope that God gives and that we were able to be his hands and feet. I'm so thankful for this opportunity and I hope that I am able to go back for the next two years. Our God is so good and he moved in ways that I would have never been able to imagine. I hope I was able to be a light for Christ that week and that his name was known. Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I will be talking about my personal experience on the Dominican Republic. So I put in an application at the beginning of this year, and I was so excited when Mr. Hammond told me that I would be able to be participate in this year's missions trip. So 
I had been planning, I've been really hoping to be able to go since my 8th grade year when I first heard about it. So I was so excited when Mr. Hammond came to me and said that I had been accepted to be part of the team. When we left on March 3rd, I was really scared, I think, just because like, I didn't know what to expect. And this is my first year traveling without my parents, and I was really scared about the makeup work. But don't ever worry about that, because that is so like small compared to like how much stuff that we got to do down there. So we, so my, I think my favorite part about there was just being able to hang out with the kids, especially at the youth group on Friday. I think it was just really good to be able to just hang around kids my age down there and just be able to just talk about God and share his word. I know for me it was just kind of hard just to like blend in with everyone just because like I'm Chinese and just everyone kind of like stared at me a lot. So it was kind of embarrassing and nervous, nerve wracking. So I was nervous and it was nerve wracking just to go down there just and look entirely different. But it wasn't as bad as I had thought. But anyway, so Mr. Ham had asked me on Friday night to share my testimony in front of the youth group. And I said yes, because I can't really say no. But I'm I'm really glad that I did just because like, I was really appreciative to be able to share my testimony and just relate to how being adopted into a worldly family like this and related to how I'm adopted into God's family. So that was a really really unique thing that I was able to do down there. And I think just one thing that I will forever remember is just being able to bond with all of my team members just because like they helped me grow so much in the Lord and just being um, really super duper supportive. And like if I was struggling and one night we just, we all bonded really tightly. So I just am so grateful to them all that we were able to go down there together. And I love each and every one of them. They all... I definitely grew a lot closer to them. I would personally like to thank Miss Carlson, Miss Bryant, Miss Jessie, and Miss White for help allowing me to go down to their classes and just minister to them and just kind of tell them what we're going to be do doing down there. And I'm so thankful that they brought in the supplies that they did because I know I was really nervous and like wasn't expect knowing what to expect. So they just made it super easy. So I just want to thank you all who the teachers who I named, and just thank you all for everyone else who brought in supplies. A restless generation We're turning over every stone Hoping to find salvation in a world that's left us cold Can we get back to the altar Back to the arms of our first love There's only one way to the Father And He's calling out to us To the captive it looks like freedom To the orphan it feels like home To the skeptic it might sound crazy To believe in a God who loves It's the good news for us all It's greater than religion It's the power of the cross So can we get back to the altar Back to the arms of our first love There's only one way to the Father And He's calling out to us To the captive it looks like freedom
can receive Jesus into our lives, but that he's already received us into his. In my own life, it means forgiveness when I know I deserve the fall. It called me out of my darkness and carried me to the cross. In a moment, my eyes were open. In that moment, my heart was changed. Like a blinding light in the dead of night, it's the gospel. Oh, to the captive, it looks like freedom. To the orphan, it feels like home. Yeah, to the skeptic, it might sound crazy. i 
right, guys, we hope you enjoyed the videos. And as we wrap up our chapel time today, I'm going to ask Mr. Hammond to close us in prayer. Before we pray, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to all of you for praying for our kids. Boy, that just that just melted my heart when I heard how much you guys are praying for my kids mm -hmm. as we went on this trip. But I also want to thank you for everything that you gave towards those missionaries and teachers down there. I wish you could see their faces. We do it privately because we don't want we don't want to make a big deal out, out of our giving. It's not that. But I want to tell you that it's a big deal. And they are so grateful for everything that you gave, whether it was a piece of candy, whether it was a pencil, a pair of scissors, some tape, whatever it was, some dry erase markers. Man, that means so much to them. So thank Thank you for that. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity you gave to the 12 students and 4 adults that got to go to the Dominican Republic this year at the beginning of March. Lord, I thank you for your hand of protection on us as we went. We got there safely and back safely. And Lord, that we didn't have any real issues, didn't have any health issues, and that you just uh, worked in each one of our hearts. God, I saw changes in, in my life, and I saw changes in the hearts of the young people that went, and we saw changes in the lives of the missionaries, as the smiles and the joy that came in their lives, and that meant so much to us. God, I pray that you would have been honored, that we would continue to seek to bring glory and honor to you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the gospel, the best news ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys for being here today. And I sure hope five, six, seven years from now that uh, we're hearing from some of you in one of these chapels about going on the DR trip. Um, thank you guys. We hope you have a good week.